Back in April, we took a trip to Namhae Island in South Korea, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the things we did. Nahe Island is located on the southern tip of the Korean Peninsula by the South Sea and is connected to the mainland by a bridge. We drove our car from our house in Asan and it took us about four hours. We stayed four nights in a place called the Schwering Pension. This pension is located in what is known as the German Village. The owner of the pension was really friendly and our room was clean and cozy. Now we are hiking back up to our hotel or not hotel, it's a pension. And it's pretty much 45, <laughs> 40, it's pretty much a 45 degree angle up to our room. So you can see the view back there, it's gorgeous. And we're just gonna walk off all this food we just ate. That's a lie, I need to do a lot of walking. Staying right here in the little corner, top of the hill. The outside of the pension looks very German, but the inside is definitely Korean. It has a small kitchen with fridge, microwave, and cooktop, small table, beanbag chairs, a bed, and a bathroom. So you may be wondering why is there a German village in Korea? Well, during 1960 to 1970, nurses and miners moved away to Germany to make money to send back to their families still living in Korea. After working in Germany for about 10 years, the nurses and miners returned back to Korea. The Korean government wanted them to feel comfortable living in Korea again, so they allowed this area in Namhae to be constructed to look like a German village. Interesting, right? We explored the German village a little the night we arrived and the next day. Even though the houses and buildings look German, you can see hints that we are still in Korea, such as these kimchi pots that you see here. Another place we visited was the Gardening Art Village located right across the Deutsche Platz in the German village. It costs 5,000 won per person to enter, and the village has a variety of gardens you can walk through, as well as examples of houses and gardens that you would find from different parts of the world, like the Netherlands or France. The village also has some great vantage points that overlook Namhae. to you about the food and drinks that we had in the German village. As you can imagine, the German village has so many restaurants specializing in German cuisine. We found German beer, schnitzel, goulash, Käsespätzle, and of course, Wurst, to name a few. So my husband and I lived in Germany for three years and we're really familiar with how German food is supposed to taste. And I will tell you that most of the food we had in Namhae didn't taste exactly like the food we were used to when we lived in Germany. And what I'm mainly referring to is the seasonings or flavor of things. And that's not really a bad thing, it's just different than expected. I will say though that the sausages we had were pretty much, tasted pretty much the same as what we had when we lived in Germany. Now let's talk about coffee in the German village. The German village, German village. There are so many cafes with amazing views overlooking the sea. I'm gonna share with you two of my favorite coffee shops in the German village area. The first one is called Felice, 
It is a cafe and bakery and also a shop where you can buy German snacks, beer, and souvenirs. The barista was so welcoming and friendly. We ended up going to Felice Cafe several times and we really enjoyed the coffee drinks we ordered there along with the fantastic views from the back deck. Another cafe favorite is Road 17. While they don't have amazing views, the inside of the cafe is aesthetic and if you're looking for a delicious coffee or mocha, this is the place to get it. So I think I've pretty much covered everything that we did in the German Village area. The next morning, we woke up early to catch the sunrise from our room. Good morning! Today we're going to visit Boryam Temple, but first, coffee. Just kidding! The cafe we had planned to go to wasn't actually open yet. Cafes in Korea don't normally open until around 10 in the morning, but we were able to make it there after the temple. So anyway, we headed over to the temple. Oriam Temple is nestled atop Kumsan Mountain and is part of Aliyo Singh National Park. Once we arrived at the park, we paid an entrance fee, which I think was about 2001. And there are two parking lots. There's one parking lot right after the entrance, and then there's another parking lot that's further up the mountain. The road leading up to the parking lot was steep and winding. We parked our car and then paid 1,001 per person to continue walking up the mountain to the temple. We're walking up to the Corium Hermitage now. It's a little steep. Nothing, crawling, crawling up there. <laughs> nothing we can't handle. After about 15 minutes of walking, we were greeted by this beautiful temple overlooking the Sangju Silver Sand Beach and the South Sea. It was so peaceful and relaxing there. <laughs> We got back to our car a little after 11 o'clock and there were already cars waiting to park and there was a long line of cars at the bottom of the mountain waiting to drive up so if you're gonna go I recommend arriving sometime before 10 o'clock in the morning and this was on a weekday. Next we took a quick drive through the American Village before going to a cafe. The American Village is a lot smaller than the German Village but people are still able to park and explore if they choose. was another favorite of ours. I got a flat white, which was perfect, and grilled rice cakes that came with some kind of floral citrusy dipping sauce that was delicious. Tim got an iced latte and some bread topped with spinach pesto that he really enjoyed. The menu was in Hangul, but we were able to translate what we wanted with the Papago app, and 
When the barista came over with our order, it came with this handwritten note in English explaining where our food came from. That was just so thoughtful of her. This cafe is about a 10 minute drive from the German village and definitely worth going to if you ever find yourself in Nye. That afternoon, we drove over to see the rapeseed fields in Taringi village. This village is known for its terraced paddy fields that look like waves overlooking the coast. In April, you will find them full of yellow rapeseed flowers and in June, rice will be planted in its place. We wandered through some of the walking paths and those bright yellow flowers against the blue sea backdrop in late afternoon offered up some stunning views. We ended the day catching the sunset at Sachum Beach. On our last day in Namhae, we hit the road to Sangju Silver Sand Beach. This beach is located at the foot of Kumsan Mountain, and I mentioned earlier in this video that the beach can be seen from Boryam Temple that's located on top of Kumsan Mountain. This beach was beautiful, and we practically had it all to ourselves since it was only spring and not many tourists were out just yet. We had some snacks, took in the scenery, and walked around for a bit. And that was our trip to Nam Hay. We had a great time. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. And if you live in South Korea, I hope you visit Nam Hay one day if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.